we are live outside of, of course, the regular old grind. It's lunchtime at work, and we are talking Edmonton Oilers trades as we were last year around this time. Ken Holland pulls a midday deal and well executes what is an important one for the Edmonton Oilers that secures the bottom six at long last going into this playoff run. It costs a first round pick, but friends, we got breaking news, albeit half an hour late here on Dolly TV today, as the Oilers will officially look to add Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick to the lineup. The Oilers will part with a first round pick, a late round pick, I believe somewhere in the fourth, fifth round. It's conditional from what we're hearing across all the insiders. And of course, we are getting, according to Elliot Friedman, a seventh round pick back in return for our first and our fourth. So interesting of note there for the Edmonton Oilers that right now we're going to go out there and grab a whole bunch of roster in one trade, right? We were talking about combo deals and Sam Carrick and Adam Henrique were two guys that we expected to be a combo deal if the Oilers indeed decided to pull off a combo deal. Mantha obviously went from Washington to Vegas yesterday, leaving the other combo package, which was Henrique and Carrick on the table. And Mr. Ken Holland talking to Pat Verbeek over the past month decides to pull the trigger on a very big trade for the Oilers all told. It's our 2024 first and a conditional pick for two guys that are going to solidify your third and fourth line. I believe Henrique at times, especially if the Oilers decide to go different looks at different stages of the playoffs, will be on the second line left wing. But this now allows the Oilers technically to run a top nine, top nine, the Oilers have a top nine now with Adam Henrique mixed in of you can have a guy on the left wing up with Connor McDavid in, Ryan Nugent Hopkins if you really want, right, up there with Connor McDavid and Zach Hyman. You can run Leon Dreisettle with Evander Kane and Zach uh, with, uh, sorry, Evander Kane and Adam Henrique if you want to do it that way. Then you have Fogel. And, of course, then to Henrique and Perry. You can do this a million different ways. But the Edmonton Oilers have a ton of ability now for flexible roster forwards without costing us a roster forward. So this Oilers team just got two NHL players deeper than they were before. That's the crazy part here, friends. We're no longer talking rumors when it comes to Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick. These guys are Edmonton Oilers at long last, and you love to see it because for the Oilers, this solidifies a lot right down the middle. You get two strong players on your team now. Henrique's a great player uh, in all facets of the game. Sam Carrick's a strong penalty killer and a strong fourth line forward for a team that desperately needs a hard to win against fourth line in the playoffs, right? The Oilers aren't asking the fourth line to score the goals that win the series. The Oilers are just simply asking the fourth line to not bleed chances like it typically does. Even that game last night against the Boston Bruins, it was a lot of times the fourth line got into sketchy situations in our own end. Bend don't break, which is fantastic, but still you don't want to see the fourth line getting kind of bent uh, bent back into our own zone and having to face off against the other team's top line at home in a situation where they got out, iced the puck, and uh, now all of a sudden they're hemmed in. So excited to see Sam Carrick on that fourth line. I think he adds size over a guy like Derek Ryan, who's been playing down there on the fourth line. You can now go Derek Ryan on the right wing. You can probably go with as well uh, Dylan Holloway and as well down the middle Sam Carrick. That's a much deeper fourth line. You can rotate in Sam Gagne and Connor Brown, but now we just have every kind of piece we needed up front kind of taken care of in one deal. And it costs a first round pick realistically, right? Fourth and a fifth, I don't care. The Oilers aren't going to draft worth a dang with those picks anyway. And as, of course, even if you give up for double retention, we have the potential to have another move in the works. And Bob Stoffer is promising another move for the Edmonton Oilers. So I'm excited to see what that ultimately comes out to for the Oilers. But right now, just securing that bottom six is so important to me, right? We watched uh, over the past few years, Ryan McLeod's not quite the NHL caliber player you need on the third line as a centerman when it comes to playoff time. Not saying Ryan McLeod's useless, because I think running him as the left winger on the second line would be absolutely fantastic. But then you have Kane, Henrique, and Perry has been suggested out there. This trade, as much as it only costs us a first, 
uh, solves so much for the Edmonton Oilers headaches that we've been seeing since pretty much the back half of that 16 game win streak. I am just absolutely elated that the Oilers were able to pull this deal off and all it costs is one top pick, right? And I think that was, I guess, the reasoning behind that for me. We knew that was going to be the cost for Adam Henrique. I knew there had been hope out there in oil country that it wouldn't cost a first rounder, but you get double retention on Adam Henrique, you get Sam Carrick, and of course as well, you part with three picks to make it all happen, and one's a first and the other two are below the fourth round. I'm a happy camper with that. The Oilers also get a seventh round pick back if you're just tuning in. That according to where I hit the live button. So, at the end of the day, this is a massive win in my mind. Henrique's a 42-point player this season. Name a guy who's proven and simply goes out there and does the connection kind of tends to happen once in a while out here outside of work but uh yeah no it's it's a huge deal for the Edmonton Oilers all told realistically they get a guy who is a proven winner when it comes down to it and that's that's the big thing not that Adam Henrique's won much in his career but the game he plays the style in which he works and a guy that isn't asked to be a top line centerman for this Edmonton Oilers squad or even a centerman will simply just slot in on the third line behind either McDavid and Nugent Hopkins or McDavid and Drysaddle, that's a massive difference all told for an Edmonton Oilers squad when you look at any fan, right? Compare Adam Henrique against Ryan McLeod. We like what we've got in a guy like Adam Henrique coming in for a first round pick and you get Sam Carrick and you get a seventh round pick. I really see this as nothing but an absolute win for the Edmonton Oilers. So. The, uh, the Oilers will go out there and obviously work these guys into the lineup over the probably weekend, I assume, is when Carrick and Henrique will join the Oilers, and we'll see kind of what shakes out after this NHL trade. And my friends, that will pretty much do it all for me here this afternoon. Thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon. Really do appreciate you being along for the ride outside of work. Like I said, it was going to be car videos all week, and that's exactly what we've got here as the Edmonton Oilers have pulled off the deal one more time for those of you just tuning in here this afternoon. It is Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick. Adam Henrique possibly at double retention for a first round pick, a fourth somewhere in there, a fifth somewhere in there, and a seventh round pick coming back to the Edmonton Oilers. So the Oilers make their move, get their two roster forwards without sacrificing anybody up front. This Edmonton Oilers team just got deeper with Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick without sacrificing any roster players. That's a pretty massive win for Ken Holland and the Edmonton Oilers and all it costs is a first round pick. I'm Tyson, this is Stolony TV. Thank you so much for being aboard this afternoon. I will catch you in the next one.